Well, hey there. It's been a hot second since I have filmed a proper monthly favorites, but the month of January is almost over and I have some favorites that I wanted to tell you guys about. This is a general favorites. I've got some makeup, hair, skincare, a fragrance, and also some books. I just kind of generally wanted to update you on my life, the things that I've been loving over the last month, and you guys can do the same in the comments down below. What have you been loving? What things in the beauty, hair, skin, and etc. have been tickling your fancy? What are some products that you've been loving? Let us know in the comments below. Before we get started, I did want to mention that I have filmed this look. It's a very exciting, fun, sneaky, full face video that you guys will be seeing on Monday. So if you have any questions about my maquillage, the stuff that's on my face, you gotta check back on Monday. Make sure to like this video if you like monthly favorites and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see this look and any future videos from me and be sure to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified when I upload a new video because YouTube has decided that again, subscribing is not enough. I'm gonna start with makeup. I only have two makeup favorites and here's why. Over the last few months, I've been doing like a daily makeup bag. So I film a video and show you guys the makeup that is in my everyday makeup bag outside of me filming YouTube videos. And that's the best way to kind of see the products I'm loving and putting on my face on the daily. So if you missed that video, I will link it here and also down below. And I also just did a big review video, a big long 40 minute review video featuring some of the new products in the world and my thoughts on them. So reviews, the daily makeup bag, Besides that, I'm pretty much using the same stuff. However, there are two standout beauty products that I've been using lately that really just topped the favorite pile. The first one being the MAC Glow Play blushes, which was such a rude thing to name these blushes. It's very, very hard to say that, but I did include this in that 40 minute long review video and they are just beautiful. This one is the shade So Natural. It's like a cream, cloudy, bubbly textured blush. It is very, very soft. Doesn't have any like detectable glittery pigments in it. It just goes on so softly onto the cheek. You can apply it with your fingers or a brush, however you want. And it just gives the most gorgeous soft wash of color. I love that they've updated this packaging. I think it's so cool. I love that they're keeping it permanently. And though it reminded me of the old Maybelline <laughs> Dream Bouncy blushes from like my junior high days, I do feel like that this was quite innovative in the way it applies, it's color, it's feeling. You just have to go, if, even if you're not gonna buy these blushes, just go touch them for your own touching pleasure. They are a joy and that was such a, such a great discovery from this month. And there is in fact an official release date. These are going to be available as of February 6th, which is very exciting. So natural is my favorite one, obviously, because it's like the perfect nude. It kind of reminds me of MAC Warm Soul in like a cream format. Anywho, it's great. Huge favorite from the month. Another favorite is actually this Burberry face contour stick. I've had this for a long time. I have I've used it in a ton of videos and there are also many cream contour dupes that exist in the world. I know that Burberry is definitely up there on the price point scale, but I think what I love about this is just how easy it is to use and how small and compact it is. Whenever I'm using this contour, first of all, I love the shade. Like this particular shade just matches me so well. But when I'm using it, it's just so satisfying and fun. It's like an adult Sharpie on my face. I get to like doodle and play with this. It's just, it's really satisfying to use and to paint on my face. I love contour. I love everything bronze. I love to chisel myself out. So naturally a contouring product would be my favorite regardless, but it's a very creamy, very easily blendable formula. And again, the size of it just makes it so travel friendly and I travel a lot and having a product that's a little bit more compact and then also not worrying about like a powder contour shattering when you're traveling around. It's just been so great. I love this creamy contour stick and it has been such a standout product. Like I really haven't gone too many a days without using this. It's pretty fantastic. So those are my two kind of makeup favorites. I wanted to go into skincare because if you guys follow me on Instagram, Adeline Rama. I was actually recently in Utah with Kate Somerville. I was very, very excited about this. They actually approached me in November. They sent me a giant box of their products and I had never used Kate Somerville before. It's a brand I was always aware of, but I had never tried their products personally. And so I was super excited, also hesitant because <sighs> One of the products that they are known for, the line they're known for is their like exfoliate line. And I was always like, 
like this to chemical exfoliants and you know products that use more harsh acid ingredients my skin reacts so badly to acid and vitamin c and retinols and all that good stuff so i emailed them back and i was like oh i don't know how that's gonna work for me and then they reassured me being like trust me try it it's okay for sensitive skin what have you so one of the products i was very interested in and one thing that they said would work for my skin was the kate somerville liquid exfoliate which is essentially a chemical exfoliator it has ahas and all that good stuff i think it was 10 percent aha content which really scared me and it's a triple acid resurfacing treatment now like i mentioned before they sent me this package back in november and it actually took me until the very end of december before i tried these because i was scared as pictured here this is what usually happens to my skin whenever i use acid or vitamin c products my my skin burns and it's not the good kind like it's like a painful burn like some products you use and it has like a warming tingly effect on your skin and that's when you know like a product is working this is not the same thing this is a burn i get burns i get hives rashes it gets itchy and sore so i was really really scared to try this but again they had reassured me and when landmus was over we took a two-week break and i was like all right well i'm not filming i'm not gonna be on camera if i'm ever gonna try this product now's the time and the reason why i actually wanted to try it is because throughout the month of december i don't know how visible it would have been in the videos but i was getting so much texture just this like not not zits necessarily but just these bumps all over my forehead and a lot on my cheeks and you know every time you apply highlighter it kind of just highlights all the texture that's going on your face and like i always have a little bit of texture going on but it got really bad in december so i was like you know what screw it let's give it a try and it worked on my skin overnight it was like an overnight miracle i woke up and it was just someone was like i need to see before and after photos and i was like you know what i really should have taken before and after photos and i'm so sorry i didn't but i used this and it made such a noticeable difference right away it didn't burn my skin it didn't hurt you put two pumps onto a cotton pad and just rub it around your face wherever you're wanting the triple acid resurfacing to happen and it was such an instant noticeable difference my skin the texture has been so reduced and my skin has been feeling so good and fresh and yeah that's been a huge huge favorite from the month so I had been using that all throughout January and then Kate Somerville which was so kind actually invited us on the trip we went to Sundance Film Festival which was super exciting and we got to meet Kate Somerville herself and her family and the whole team they were there and we got to learn so much about the brand and hear from Kate Somerville herself and how she started her brand what her passions are and just hear a lot more in-depth information about the products which is exciting so this was definitely a favorite from that and I've been using this since December which is why I feel comfortable talking about it now because I've actually been using it for almost an entire month now. By the way, you can use this nightly. I've been using it about three times a week. And I did receive and have gotten to try a lot more of the products since we went on that trip. But I feel like it's still too soon for me to give too much of an opinion on these products because I haven't been using them for too long. But one product I did want to mention that I did discover while on that trip was this Dermal Quench Liquid Lift. This is the Advanced Hydration Treatment. And this is such a unique product. They actually had their like top esthetician Kelly there with us in the house and they gave us like these little individualized oxygen facials. She had their entire giant machine and she said that the inspiration behind this product was taking that like oxygen facial that someone gets at a clinic and bringing them home to you. This is basically hyaluronic acid and oxygen and the oxygen like the spray. It is a spray. I don't want to waste it but it goes like this. The oxygen basically just helps all of the hydrating products penetrate your skin and it does give you that like warm tingly feeling on your skin. It just totally smooths out, plumps and hydrates your skin. It is the coolest thing just like shooting this spray of oxygen at your face. <laughs> and this one too had like a very, very noticeable difference right away on my face. So out of the out of everything I tried from Kate Somerville thus far, these two were my top. These were my favorites. And again, it was really great being able to be there with Kate Somerville and learning more about the brand. And as I continue to try more products, I'll obviously keep you guys updated, but those two have been a tippity top in January. A skincare unfavorite that I had this month. Ugh. And I feel badly because I did post this on Instagram. But here's the thing. For those of you who have very sensitive skin, let me know how you feel. Like sometimes I'll use a product and I'll be so excited about it and it'll feel so good and it'll feel like it's worked so well. And then suddenly my skin's just like, nope. Nope, it's not working for us anymore. And that's kind of what happened with this. So I purchased the Drunk Elephant F-Bomb Electrolyte Water Facial 
that water facial. <laughs> and I was really excited about it because there's not a lot of like overnight facial mask products that I have used and loved in the past. I never want my skin to like become immune to anything. So I'm always looking for products to switch my, my regulars up with. And so yeah, a hydrating water facial to wear overnight. I was like, perfect. That has my name written all over it. And the first couple times I used it, I was like, okay, this is cool. I put it on right before bed. Went about my business. You can wear it overnight or just like as a mask and you can use it with other things. You can layer it with serum and oils and all that good stuff. And the last two times I used it were, were as a mask and during the day. And it just made me so itchy. I don't know what it is. I don't know why. Like I have no idea what would be in here that would make me so itchy but it did make me so itchy. And I have previously reacted to a Drunk Elephant product. So I'm not sure what it is in this, but I was really excited. I definitely spent a good chunk of dough on it and I just got super, super itchy. And it is a mystery. And I am curious to know what you guys thought, if any of you have tried this. Those with sensitive skin, did you get along with it? How did you feel? I feel badly for putting this as like an unfavorite from the month, but I felt like I needed to update you because I had posted on Instagram being like, wow, this is so nice. But then it just, my skin turned on it and said nay. So that's that, that's that little thing. Let's move on to hair. Let's move on to hair products because I am on a regrowth train. I'm trying to grow my hair out and bring it back to health. For a long time, I bleached my hair. It was like chopped off into a lob, TBT to those lob days. And it was like a bright platinum white blonde. And my hair was so dead. My hair was so dead. I had so much breakage. It was so dry and strawy, which is what inspired this whole growth grow out and trying to get back to a state of my somewhat natural color. And I want to update you guys as I go as to what I'm using. My hair stuff is pretty much the same. I use the Kerastase Blonde Absolu line for shampoo and conditioner. But there are two products that I've been consistently using over the last couple of months. One being a product that I mentioned over Lanmis. This is the Briogeo Don't Despair Repair Honey Moisture Mask. From what I've gathered, it is the same formula as their regular mask, which I also love, but I guess they just like pumped it with honey and then put it in this cute little honey bear, which is very annoying. Even though it's got the big butt on here for some, maybe I have a faulty package, I don't know. <laughs> it's really hard for me to get the product out of here, but I've pretty much been using this mask every time I wash my hair, which is as infrequently as possible. But if I know I'm about to wash my hair the next morning or after I go to the gym or whatever, I just soak my ends in this mask and put it in a sweet little bun up top. And my hair does feel very noticeably softer after I wash my hair when I've let it soak in this. And it's just a really nice mask. It smells very nice. And honestly, even though it's a pain in the butt, the packaging is real cute. So I picked that up back in December and I've been using it since and I've already gone halfway through the bottle. It's beautiful. And if you're looking for a new hair mask to try and pump up some moisture in your hair over the winter, this one's been great. Another product that I've been using so much lately, I mean, I've, I've used so much of it considering how little Little you use each time you use it. Use, 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 use. This is the way leave-in conditioner. The scent is a little bit strong for my liking. I know they have their like classic scent. It's a little strong for me. However, I did recently overhear a little tip from a very renowned stylist was that heat protecting products are a scam, a marketing scam. He basically said that any product that you put in your hair before blow drying and whatnot, if it's coating your hair, it's gonna protect your hair somewhat from heat and styling. And I thought that was a very interesting tip. And he said, and I quote, even though I was eavesdropping and it was none of my business, <laughs> that if you use a leave-in conditioner, it's essentially acting like a heat protectant as well. So when I heard that, I kind of was just like, oh, I'm gonna stop throwing all this random crap in my hair and I'm just gonna scale it back. And that's when I started using the way leaving conditioner pretty much exclusively in my hair before I blow dry it. And it's been great, it's been great. I mean, I haven't styled my hair right now. This is it actually air dried out of the shower and it looks pretty healthy. It looks pretty coated, it looks pretty shiny. And I feel like my hair has just been very like healthy feeling and moisturized and this feels nice. And I don't know, I don't know how else to describe it other than it just gives my hair a nice feeling. It's like not too heavy, it's not too greasy. I spray a little bit of this just in the ends because if you do put it in the roots, it's too much. Don't do the roots, keep it to the ends. I massage it in and then when I blow dry or let my hair air dry, and it's just great. And these two products with my hair have just been giving it like just this lovely, boost of moisture. And perhaps that's been helping my hair in its in its growing stages. 2020 is the year of long hair, my good people. We're almost there. We're getting there. Let's talk about a fragrance favorite. I'm not gonna lie, I am a fragrance hoe. I've got I've got 12 fragrances over there. 
sitting on a little box. And like, depending on what my mood is, depending on what I'm doing, how spicy I'm feeling, I've got like a different fragrance for every mood and thing that I do, you know? That sounds so aggressive and so extra, but it's true. I have like two general scent profiles that I enjoy. One is very like fresh and fruity, and then I love a very like warm, musky but not too musky, still a little bit of fruit in there. I also very strongly rotate my favorites, but again, I dip into a lot of fragrances and I feel like fragrance is very personal. However, this is a fragrance that I've never talked about on my YouTube channel. And it's something that, as you'll see, I've used a lot of and thought I should mention it as a favorite because it, it goes on to the side of the fresh and fruity and I've been using it a lot. This is the Giorgio Armani. <sighs> It's funny, Dan Dan told me how I pronounce this and I've already forgotten. It's the Light D. Gioa? Gua. Gioa. Gioia. Ah, uh, it's that. It's this spelling. Really beautiful bottle. It's got this little like stone looking thing on here, but it just. It just smells so good. I've already gone through half the bottle. I do drench my body in fragrance every time I wear it, but it just smells so great. It smells so fresh. And even though it's winter, and this is definitely more of like a lighter summery scent, on days when I just wanna feel more fresh and fruity and happy, this is such a great fragrance to go to. And I just wanted to give it a little bit of love because I have put quite a dent in this and I've been using it a lot. So that is a fragrance favorite for sure. I wanted to kind of update you on my little book club. I did actually make a book club highlight on my Instagram for anyone who's curious about how the 2020 goals go, the New Year's intentions, reading two books per month. And I did, listen, I failed on the one fiction and one non-fiction. I did stick to a non-real life genre, but these are the two books I read this month. The Handmaid's Tale and Where the Crawdads Sing. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this one over with. The Handmaid's Tale was cool. It was slow to start. I definitely wanted to finish it to know what happened, to know what it was about. The ending was so rude. God, it just left you on such a cliffhanger. And I know that that's like the point. That's what the author was trying to do. Like you decide what her fate was. I hate that. I just want to know what happens. Feed me a fantasy land. But it was a really great book. It definitely made me feel like uncomfortable and sad for women and being a woman in general. I was like, ugh. It definitely makes me want to watch the TV show and kind of see how they interpret this book. I know a lot of people are fans of the TV show, so I definitely want to watch that after reading that book. And then, oh my God, you guys, I didn't know if I was gonna finish a second book in January, but I read this in two days. And this was the top book that you guys recommended to me on Instagram. When I asked for book recommendations, freaking everyone said this book. Apparently it is her first book, her first novel. And for a first book, my God, like I was actually pretty devastated because when I finished it, I was like, I need to read more from this woman. And it was her first book. So she doesn't have another book for us to read tragically. I feel like me trying to explain this book to you if you haven't read it would just not do it justice. But all I can say is that I just feel like everyone needs to read this book. It was fantastic. It made me cry. <laughs> I did cry at the end and it was just such an, uh, it's just so good. I'm so happy that I read this book and I was really, really sad when it was over. And it's been a really long time since I had to like sit and flip through a book and like I had to finish it. And again, I read it in two days. It was just amazing. I couldn't put it down. I would definitely recommend it. It was fantastic. And thank you to everyone who recommended this book to me. So those were the two books from January. That's a little update there. And that is it for for my January favorites, you guys. Those are all the things that I've been loving and that have been tickling my soul this month. If you missed any of my videos from the month of January, I will definitely link them below for your viewing pleasure. As I mentioned before, you will be seeing this makeup look on Monday, so definitely be sure to check back then. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy almost February. I hope you all had a beautiful month and I will see you all on Monday for my next video. Bye!